where, where should we dispose of them? But, but that argument, you see, it's a, it's a straw man because you're Answer just... Answer the question. No, I am answering question. But you can't do that. That's not comparative analysis. You have to compare renewables with fossil fuels, with fracking and stuff. Right. You come up on here to try to virtue signal. I love the environment. Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. Today, we're going to be looking at a clip of Charlie Kirk having a very robust debate with a climate change activist about, you guessed it, climate change. This is an important topic. We're going to get into some very interesting facts, and it's also a very entertaining one as well. So... Let's get into it. Um, given that you believe human beings are exacerbating climate change, shouldn't you agree that we ought to transition away from fossil fuels? Well, no, I, I don't agree with that. I, my contention is I don't know. I do believe global temperatures are rising. I'm not willing to say definitively it's anthropogenic, meaning it's human activity. But if you connect the two, I asked the question I asked earlier, how much? Are there any other contributing factors to rising global temperatures other than human activity? If so, what are they and to what degree do they factor into rising global temperatures? But sure, that, you want to follow up on that? Yeah, I was wondering how can you not know whether climate change is happening when a recent survey of 88,125 climate-related studies done by the Institute of Physics cites that more than 99.9% .9 of peer-reviewed scientific papers agree that climate change is caused by human activities. How much? So how much of the global temperature rising is because of human activity? No. What percentage? Well, is it 70%, 80%, 85%, 5%, 1%? Because that's not what the study said. They're saying that human activity is contributing to part of the increase. What part? They don't know. That's debated. Can I answer that? Sure. Uh, so, like, there's actually a statistics uh, or, or a study done that suggests that climate-related uh, disasters are eight times more likely than in 1980s. Well, hold on a second. You know that we have less people dying because of quote unquote climate related disasters thanks to fossil fuels. We have less people dying because of extreme exposure to cold, hurricanes, because of the advancements we have thanks to fossil fuels. You know, this idea, it's very interesting in modern society. We take for granted the idea of having widespread shelter, heating or air conditioning in extreme climates thanks to hydrocarbons, we take for granted. That used to be a leading cause of death of human beings up until 1850s. Now, if I, if I posit your contention, climate-related catastrophes, even though, according to peer-reviewed studies, that climate-related catastrophe death is actually at all-time all low, the question is then for you, which is, what would you get rid of when and what would the cost of that be? That is the question, so please answer. Guys, just before we get to the next part, if you don't mind quickly chucking a thumbs up on the video, that would help me enormously with my algorithms. And also, if you're getting value from this channel, genuinely so, and if you wanna be a part of the community, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Back to the clips. Well, I was just wondering, like, you know, you didn't really answer my question, but I was, um, obviously I can't give you like exact percentage of numbers, but I do, Think that we ought to transition away from fossil fuel, right? Like, I'm not against growth or development. I obviously agree with you that, you yep. know, the Industrial Revolution, like, economic growth is good. It's good. lifting people out of poverty. That's obviously good, right? But in developed countries today, where we have the ability to not damage our economy, but also benefit the environment, shouldn't we do that? Okay, so give me an example. What specifically would you ban? You're king for a day. What would you ban? Would you ban liquid natural gas? Would you buy nu ban nuclear? Would you ban fracking? Would you ban... What kind of hydrocarbons would you ban? Give me the examples and you're king for a day. What would you do? Well, see, I, I wouldn't, like, straight up ban something, right? And so I'm not, I'm not at, okay. av like, advocating for, like you know, just like fossil fuels, we end fossil fuels like okay, that's immediately. A, that's right? a mature answer, good for you, no, I mean that. That's the, because the, the, the radicals don't always say that. Please continue. Right, so I'll, I'll, I'll argue for like market-based solutions, a transition away, like, like for example, I think um, in 2020, like uh, the government funded $5.9 trillion to fossil fuel companies. I would say that instead of investing these, this money, $5.9 trillion to fossil yeah, fuel that, companies. That, that doesn't sound right. But you might, might be in tax credits, maybe, or tax breaks. That, that doesn't sound Subsidies. right. Subsidies. Subsidies. No, that's $5.9 billion, probably not trillion. There's no, no it's, way. It's, it's, it's trillion. Yeah, well, it's, the, federal, it's, the federal budget was $3.8 trillion. So there's no way we spent well, more than our federal budget. No, no, no. But I'm going to help you out. It's probably billion. Did you say no, tri did you say trillion or billion? It's it's trillion. It's done by the International Mon Monetary Fund, and probably is not. It's it's not possible. I mean, I'm sorry no, to. I'm not, I'm not saying just in the United States. Oh, okay, worldwide. All right, then that might be conceivable. Right. Sure. 
So, I mean, yeah, but anyway, so... Okay, this is important, guys, because it's one of the easiest arguments to refute when it comes to the whole climate change narrative. Don't ever let anybody tell you that the push towards net zero and towards removing fossil fuels is going to save lives. Because in reality, this is a policy that will put billions of lives in imminent danger. And to be honest, 99% of the people who talk about this sort of stuff and who are putting themselves in the middle of the road and stopping traffic or throwing soup at paintings have no idea what they're talking about. They're just unemployed or spent too much time at uni and now they hate their parents. It's not like they're evil, they're just taking the mainstream narrative, drinking the Kool-Aid that's fed to them by their professors and doing whatever makes them sound cool to their friends and gives them that deep, sense of worship that they're yearning for. And like Charlie alluded to, the number of deaths that has happened due to climate over the last hundred years has gone down precipitously. And you know why? Because of that one thing that is constantly demonized. That one thing that all of the liberal elites want to get rid of. The one thing that has revolutionized human quality of life. And that is, of course, fossil fuels and cheap energy. That factor that allows for much more sophisticated infrastructure in terms of factories, transportation, indoor heating, cooling, and so much more. And this especially affects people in poor countries, the most vulnerable people in the world. It allows them to refrigerate their food and put heating in their home so they don't freeze to death, which by the way happens a lot more than deaths by heat, and it allows for air conditioning for when it gets too hot. So when people say that we need to get rid of fossil fuels to save lives and to look out for the most vulnerable people and that climate change is racist and it disproportionately affects the poor, this narrative is horseshit and it needs to be treated as such. Obviously, the Earth's resources are finite and that's a discussion to be had. And obviously, natural disasters are going to affect people in poorer countries. We see it all the time. But the way that we're definitely not going to solve that is to take away any chance that they have of actually protecting themselves against these natural disasters. The people who live in these very poor and vulnerable places, these middle to upper class Western idiots gluing themselves to the road couldn't even point out on a map. <laughs> yet they always want a virtue signal on behalf of, have been increasingly liberated by access to cheap energy, especially things like electricity. Just as an example, every year in India alone, over a million people die due to indoor air pollution. This is because they have to burn things like cow dung to heat their homes. This is because they don't have electricity because energy is too expensive for them. And with the energy crisis in the world at the moment, that's only getting a lot worse. So all of these places that don't have video cameras and iPhones and aren't writing blogs about it are being absolutely devastated by the rising prices of energy. We just don't see it. And trust me guys, I've been to some of these places over the last year, it's not pretty. And there are countless examples that I could give of this but the nucleus of the argument is that these developing countries that we speak of are not only better off for having cheap energy and for fossil fuels, I would argue that this is the key ingredient for sustaining our population and for moving our civilization forward. And maybe if we do keep on moving forward and developing these countries, then who's to say we won't eventually find a source of energy that is completely clean? We haven't done it yet, but I have faith in humanity and I would back us to do it. So I would say instead of subsidizing these fossil fuels companies, I would say that take these subsidies to renewables and other forms of cleaner energy that would be beneficial to the environment right, while it. still pertaining to Fair enough, La last question. So where do we get the cobalt to make the batteries and what do we do with them? No, I'm asking, wh wh where, where do you recommend we get the cobalt to make the batteries? Wait, can, can I answer? So, like, your argument is about this mining argument, right? Like, no, I'm not making, I'm asking a question, dude. Like, where, we, where do we get it from? Yeah, so, so then how about this? Where should, where, how, how and where should we dispose of the incredibly acidic, sometimes radioactive batteries that electric vehicles use. Where, where should we dispose of them? But, but that argument, you see, it's a, it's a straw man because you're Answer just- Answer the question. No, I am answering question. I, I am answering, I am literally answering your questions, right? So you're arguing about this renewable energies <laughs> and their batteries and how they cause environmental I've, harm, right? I've asked a question. I'm not making an argument. 
what should we do with the batteries no, once we use I'm them? I'm saying that's, that's, a, that's a straw man because you can't... A straw man you, question. That's a first. I've never been accused of a straw man no, question. Because you, you, you have an underlining premise in your question that renewable energies exist in a vacuum, but you can't do that. That's not comparative analysis. You have to compare renewables for fossil fuels, with fracking and stuff. Right. All right, pal, how about this? How about this? You can't answer the question because deep down you know that cobalt-powered batteries are worse for the environment than liquid and natural gas and nuclear power. So you come up on here to try to virtue signal, I love the environment, but as soon as you ask me about the incredibly environmentally inefficient, destructive, animal-killing, acidic-producing batteries, you're a strong man. You're out of time. Thanks for being here tonight. Next question. So that was a fun debate, and I actually rate this kid's attitude. Charlie treated him well. They had a good debate, and Charlie came at him pretty hard as well, and the audience was booing him and heckling, and the kid stayed strong, and he didn't take a step back, so I respect that. It's definitely not easy to do, and he showed some balls. And I'm a big fan of spirited debates, and I can't stand when people get offended and soft about these things. If you truly care about discussing ideas, then you should be able to cop it like that kid did and then just give it straight back to the audience. It makes things funner and more interesting and people don't have to walk on eggshells around each other when talking about controversial issues this way. So props to them both and let's make debating great again and let's make being a victim and being offended lame again. I'll make the hats. So with that guys, don't forget to hit that link at the top of the comments there and come and support me on Logals if you would like to do so and if you get value from my work. And also, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can click right here. If you want to watch another video, click right here. Until next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.